So this is a video I couldn't decide if I should make or not, because it feels like everyone has already seen a video on the Balcanto. Is there any more that could be said about this watch? Hi, my name is Tom and some of you might know me as Bowl of Salmon on Instagram. In today's video I'm not gonna tell you anything you don't know yet, but I can at least try to show you some more good footage. I'll be honest, I didn't see this release coming, but did anyone? Don't get me wrong, Christopher Ward makes great value watches. When they released the C63 Sealander, I even bought one, and it looked and felt great, but let's be honest, it kinda reminded everybody of something else. Now, Christopher Ward doesn't shy away from naming their heroes when they release a new watch. If we look at the 12, they keep drawing inspiration from some of the icons in the watch world. And there is nothing wrong with that. So again, seeing this release from Christopher Ward was kind of a surprise. And this wasn't released as a sub-brand focusing on more higher-end horology experiments. Balcanto is 200% a Christopher Ward, even if they didn't put the name on the dial this time. This watch is on loan from Christopher Ward. I wasn't going to make a video because, as Brit stated, everyone has done one already. But as soon as it arrived and I pointed my camera at it, well, it's bloody mesmerizing, isn't it? And I realized that there's probably quite a few of you waiting for this watch to arrive. So for those who already know everything about this watch, be my guest, mute the video. But you will be missing out on this. The watch is powered by what the team call an FS01 movement, a re-engineered Salita SW200-1, a self-winding automatic movement with a power reserve of 38 hours. And just don't even dare to say, but oh, it's just a Salita movement. The team at Christopher Ward re-engineered the jump power movement and re-harnessed that energy to chime the time every hour. This watch has a sonnerie au passage complication, a complication usually reserved for more haute horlogerie and therefore more exclusive and expensive timepieces. Beside all the pretty stuff that makes the gong dong, there is a whole extra level of complicated hiding underneath that dial. In total, a 60 extra components have been added to the movement to make it all clang the bang like clockwork. Before we have a look at what magic is going on, let's have a look at the specs. There is a case diameter of 41 mm, a case height of 13 mm, a very wearable lug to lug of 48 mm, and the watch takes 22 mm straps. The case is made of grade 5 titanium and the whole watch just weighs 53 grams. As my Pelagos 39 rattling clasp has learned me, titanium resonates sounds better, so every time the mockingbird shakes his tail, a clear audible chirp can be heard. The finishing of the case has a mix of brushed and polished surfaces. I wouldn't call this watch exactly tin on the wrist, but I guess this isn't going to be an everyday piece for most of you. Because of how light it is, it wears super comfortable and I don't think it wears clumsy or anything like that. Initially released as a limited edition at the end of 2022, the Belcanto is now also a part of the main collection and is available in four colors. We have Nero, Viola, Rosa, and the one I have in for review, the Cello Blue, which is like a light sky blue kind of blue. And the domed sapphire crystal lets you gaze at the marvelous blue dial and all things on top without annoying reflections thanks to a decent AR coating. At 12 o'clock we can find a stacked subdial floating above the dial. That subdial in fact is kept in place by two nicely finished bridges coming in from 10 and 2 o'clock. Note how these are sloped and not just a bunch of flat components enhancing the amazing three-dimensionality of this watch. The minute, hour hand and indices are filled with superluminova, which is kinda welcome because in daylight this might not be the easiest watch to read when on the wrist. I don't mean to downplay the importance of being able to tell the time on a watch, but again, with a watch like this, it's a conversation piece, no? Just make sure to set every appointment to the hour and you will be fine. Let's move on to all the cool bits. Wrapping at the edge of the dial, there is the polished steel spring. Apparently 100 materials and shapes had been tested to find the perfect sounding chiming effect. In the middle of the watch and on top of the keyhole shape is a snail cam. Yes, named after the slimy animal. While it's a shape similar to a snail's shell with a gradual spiral curve that controls the motion of a connected component. In this case, it makes a full rotation every hour to power up the tail of the bird and every hour the lever is released which moves some more bits and bobs so the hammer strikes the gong. 
In case you don't want to be reminded every hour that you're still scrolling Instagram, you can actually disengage the mechanism via the lower push button at the side of the case. This moves some more stuff around, so the lever is disengaged from the snail cam. Why didn't I think of this? At 4 o'clock, the bird's beak indicates if the function is on or off. The hammer, spring and bridges are brass rhodium plated components and they all have been hand polished. Yet another level of detailing usually preserved for higher end timepieces. The watch comes on a matching leather strap with quick release pins for easy changing. If this was mine, I'd probably find a couple of thinner Safiano straps with some good taper. Yes, I did try it on an Ato. No, I don't dare to show that here. This is the kind of watch I can't stop staring at. The Sunray shallow dial is amazing to look at and it looks great in any light. This is the kind of watch that just makes me smile for being able to spend some time with it in the studio. It's the kind of watch that makes me all excited about horology and I wouldn't have to sell a kidney if I wanted to own one. Christopher Ward releasing this was a surprise and I wish more brands could surprise us like this. Now I'm betting there are quite a few people eagerly awaiting delivery of theirs so I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm curious to hear what you think of this one. Let me know in the comments or come find me on Instagram and I'll see you in the next one.